order at 7.01 p.m. And if we can all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance pledge to the flag, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Yes. Oh. All right, good evening again, everyone. All right, so we'll move on to item number three, which is public comment. So first I'll check, Roy, do we have any public comment that came in? We did not receive any. Okay, and since there is a member of the public in attendance, uh, I'll ask if there's any member of the public who would like to speak. I am seeing no response, then we will move on from public comment. We'll go on to item number four, which is discussion and possible action regarding possible locations of new updated community center. So before we get into, into four and then ultimately five, six, um, you know, it, it's kind of a, a chicken and an egg thing. Um, you know, we have to decide how we're going to move forward. And there's a lot of things that we need to look at. So should we talk about uh, the types of programs that we want to have first, and then at that point, look at where we could potentially hold it, and then how much we can spend it? Should we look at first how much we should spend, um, and then, you know, kind of do it a different direction? So the way that I thought made the most sense, and this is just for our discussion purposes only today, I'm not saying this is the way that we ultimately do it, we'll decide on that as a group, obviously, but was the first talk about the different locations and we started to kick those around. I think the first thing we need to do is determine where we think the best place to hold or have the community center would be at that point. Um, we could start to talk a little bit about uh, how big we can have it and that would come into uh, to price and I know that Mike has prepared a document which I'll share uh, in a little bit as part of our discussions and then ultimately we'll get into item six uh, where we can start to talk about some of the facilities and usage and again some of that may be a little premature at this point um, with COVID I don't think we fully know what this world is going to be like post COVID I actually had some uh, discussions last night with my wife about some of the potential uses that maybe we could have, maybe we can't have. And I think a lot of that is going to uh, dictate what we ultimately build. So again, we'll slowly work through these uh, these three. If we don't get through every single thing tonight, that's, that's not a problem. I think we have some time, but we can just kind of keep progressing in that fashion. So um, the first part, like I said, we're going to talk about locations, and I have my notes um, from the last meeting. And the, the three kind of main areas that we had talked about, um, and then we'll, we'll just kind of take it from there to see if there's any additions. Number one was building it in its existing location on the property that is available. Uh, secondly was uh, downtown behind Stop and Shop in the area along Route 8. And then the third was the Tritown Plaza area. We, uh, at the last meeting, seemed to think that the Gary Park uh, idea was not the best uh, solution. So with that, I'll kind of open it up to discussion to see what people's thoughts are, um, just kind of on that, and then we'll take it from there. So I don't know how, if you want to throw a hand up or how you want to do that, but we'll just kind of work our way through yeah, I'll start. Um, the existing location uh, is achievable because we have property there that you can build on if you really wanted to before tearing down the old one. It'd be some uh, logistics uh, issues, but you can uh, theoretically achieve that. Uh, and it's owned by the town. The stop and shop is private property and Triton is private property. Both would require some kind of uh, deal with developers. Um, we know uh, the Haynes property behind Stop and Shop, uh, Tom has indicated he is willing to try and work with us. Um, and it could be a, a site where you could bring Beacon Falls in. Uh, Tritown, uh, I'm not 
convinced that uh, Ron Spector is willing to do anything um, with his money. And he's probably looking at, at the town to see if they could acquire the Anderson Galuzzi properties that would, that's uh, abutting into the Tritown Plaza. Um, that could also uh, be a joint venture type with Ansonia or the YMCA. So I think those three sites do lend themselves to uh, opportunities. Uh, and we, you know, when we come down to making that decision on, on whether it's a private or, or, or municipal, municipal owned, I think then we can go out to developers and see if they want to, you know, uh, do a lease back or do some other uh, building options. But my conversation with Ron Spector uh, indicated that he's not of great interest uh, on his property. Without substantial investment from the, from the town. Correct. Okay. Correct. And, you know, he's not, and he wouldn't even promise that uh, if he was able to get it adjacent to his property, that he would be able to significantly invest in a mixed use uh, residential commercial development. Okay. So <clears throat> uh, Mike brought up a, a, an interesting point. And so just to kind of add this into your discussions with regionalization being uh, such a big driver going forward and every community looking to regionalize share costs and so on and so forth. Do we think that we should take regionalization into account and give it a, a heavy weighting when it comes to choosing the location? So with, uh, you know, with the town of Beacon Falls, our existing location in Haines would probably be uh, okay. If we were to look at a different community like Ansonia, would we be better suited at, at Triton Plaza? So I think we should give that some thought. And then the other point to that now, and it just got me thinking about this, Mike, when you mentioned uh, the YMCA, if regionalizing with another community is uh, the way we're going to go, does that now in turn expand the options that we have available to us? So if we were going to regionalize with Beacon Falls, should we be looking at potential locations in Beacon Falls as part of the discussion? So what's everybody's thoughts on that? Maybe we just start as simple as, do we think regionalization should be heavily weighted in the conversation? I mean, me personally, I think regionalization should be, especially with Beacon Falls, um, because they do have that beautiful recreation complex. I'm not positive that that's privately owned, but I do know Beacon Falls has a bunch of fields um, already there, which I assume we would get use of too as well. And I know, Kurt, last time you mentioned with the possible of stop and shop and whoever we were going to do the private um, partnership with is that they might say there might be limited field space for outdoor fields, at least. Correct. So be kind of a solution with the rec over at Beacon Falls, being able, like I said, they have multiple baseball fields, multiple fields as well, that can kind of give us the solution for the outdoor space, at least. Um, that's how I feel about the realization with the Beacon Falls. What are other people's I, thoughts on that? I think regionalization's gotta be considered, obviously, but I think a driver of that, um, I, I agree with Mike, uh, Triton Plaza adjacent properties, it's too much speculation and there's no track record of any kind of cooperation or success and committing to something this large in anticipation of putting it there will probably you know, just be like a, a nothing because in the end it may end up we don't get anything. So I, realistically, we're probably looking at the stop and shop property behind uh, because uh, in my mind, I don't see the current location bulldozing it down and putting a structure up not that it can't be done because we own the land and we can do whatever we want it a lot of it's going to be driven on what's our expectations of what we want do we want this facility with a with a with a big pool and a basketball court and god knows what else plus how many meeting rooms so i think it's kind of uh, a chicken and the egg to your point kurt before I think we want to have some kind of basic handle on the size and scope of what this project's going to look like. Then 
if it's regionalization, yeah, I mean, you can always reach out to a Beacon Falls or if somewhere closer to Ansoni or whatever and say, hey, here's what we're thinking. Here's our ideas on a facility. A, are you interested? Do they have the bandwidth and the debt structure? And do they want to legally commit to this? Or, you know, and here's what we have for size. Do you have any thoughts? If you did this, uh, do you would you want to add something to it, take something away? And then I think that's going to be the driver, the size of what we want to put up in terms of even going and talking to re, re, regarding realization. I don't think realization is a bad thing. I think it's worth the discussion. It doesn't cost you anything to get information. But I think a big driver of this is how big and what kind of facilities do we want in there, plus parking, plus whatever other fringes might go along with something like this. See, and I, I think that's where we kind of run into a, a little bit of a problem. If we went back a year in time, before COVID, the current community center location was absolutely too small. And we did, we had some preliminary sketches done of what we could possibly put there. And there was absolutely no way what we wanted for the community would work there. There just wouldn't be enough space. But now in this new COVID world, is there enough space there? So do we look at this in two ways? Do we look at building it as if COVID never happened with the assumption that the vaccine will, will take effect and COVID will, will eventually go away, the best can go away, and we'll get back to a more normal way of life? Or do we think that COVID is something that we're going to be dealing with for years to come and we're not going to have large groups and, and things like that again? So should we look at it from two different angles? Because again, if in the old world, behind stop and shop, probably was the best spot because then we could build something that encompassed fields potentially and things like that. On the community center a lot, we wouldn't be able to do that, but to Mike's point, we can go up and we can have a lot of different floors that way. So what's everybody's thoughts? I think you, you wanna be optimistic and at least at this stage of the game, hope to see what this vaccine does, what all of the other advisories and will this go away in a year or two because one of the advantages we have i think is a little bit is time i mean we don't have to sign any contracts put shovels in the ground right at this point but also i think we have a luxury of looking at pre-covid a you know a covid facility let's call it and a non-covid facility getting ideas as to size and dimensions and, and costs and just seeing what's what. So we can kind of get, a, as the clock ticks, we can get a kind of a handle on, well, is the vaccine is the vaccine working and COVID starting to shrink? Or, you know, this looks like it's going to be around for another three, four years, God forbid. But here's a contingency. All right. Uh, Tim, I think you had your hand raised. Yeah, in regards to uh, the existing community center, I th I think even you know, COVID COVID wise or non COVID wise is definitely it's it's not a big enough parcel for what we're going to be looking at. Even though we could go up different stories, if you're looking at a pool, you're looking at basketball, you're looking at parking, you know, it's just and again now you you, you take you know COVID into the and all the new regulations you're probably going to run into in the next three to five years of building regulations. Are, if we don't do a public private, you know, entity like that, you know, like somewhere like in, in that case, our costs are just going to increase even more. We're going to be out of the ballpark. We can't afford it to begin with. So I think by the time if we're saying, you know, public private, we're somewhere around 14, 15 million, you, you know, if, if we don't go the route of, of that and we already own the property, so it's got to be a, a standard build, we're, we're looking at 18 to 22 million by the time we're said and done. And it's, and that's not feasible. It's, it's definitely not feasible. Who else has comments? Anyone? Suzanne, go sure. ahead. Um, yeah, I think there'll be a new norm after COVID and who knows how long that will be to take place. I think regionalization would be helpful because um, as all the items that were mentioned, but also um, 
you know, and increase our capacity and there's strength in regionalization too, because we could bring more to the table and offer more that would help. And I remember the earlier conversation at the first meeting that Newtown built a beautiful facility, but there's a lot of vacant rooms and this not being used to capacity. So to make sure that whatever we build will be um, access, accessible to many, then we'll have the option to be able to utilize it more fully and increase our capacity. And then there's capacity building grants, et cetera, is avail available. One, one of the things that we should consider uh, coming up with your comments, uh, Tim, you know, we ought to program what we need. So we at least understand the size of the building and the relationship to parking so we can understand what size parcel we need, whether it's on the Haynes property or our own property. Um, if you don't do that, then you're, you're going to constantly, you know, second guess and, and be in a, a, a area where you don't know whether you got the right size parcel. So if you program it, you know, is, is it a pool, it's a basketball court, fitness center, locker rooms. Uh, and then from there, what other uses uh, are we proposing to include? You know, is it going to be a, a meeting rooms? Is it going to be a lecture halls? Is it going to be uh, something for the Boys and Girls Club? Is it going to be something for the food uh, pantry? You know, so let, let, we should program it so that we know exactly what we're thinking about the size of the building and then just do some test fits on some properties. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think that our next step, I think, is pretty much put a wish list together of what we think that we're going to need for or, you know, the wants, the needs or whatever, put that together and start breaking that apart so you could so to Mike's point, he could get a square footage of what we're actually looking at. I mean, I have a full, have a full wish list ready to go right now. If you guys <laughs> I know you do, Zach. Kurt, Kurt put up the uh, <laughs> list right here. Put up here. that chart. Bullet points. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <But> actually, <clears throat> um, Rory, can you give me um, control so that I can share? You should be able to share screen. Oh, okay. Hold on one second. I got it ready to go. Everybody see that? Oh, there we go. Okay, so let me walk you through this. Uh, what I've done is basically try to lay out a block diagram so we understand some theoretical sizes. And uh, again, these are gonna be adjusted to whatever you know, we feel we need. Uh, you know, a, a pool and a basketball court, which I think if they're opposite each other could be a, the two end blocks for the building, they're both going to be about 5,000 square feet, but they're also both about 25 to 30 feet tall. Okay. So there are two stories. Um, what makes sense is having the locker rooms downstairs with a fitness center. So there, there is uh, a lineal path between the uses and the locker rooms, and they're always constantly going back and forth. Um, that's, 20,000 square feet of a foot plate. So that one floor is 20,000 square feet. That's a pretty big building. Uh, if you did a second floor in the middle between the pool and the uh, basketball court, that gives you another 10,000 square feet, probably two uh, areas of use of about 4,000 square feet each, or maybe four at 2,000 square feet each because you got a lobby core area for uh, toilets, elevator of about 1500. Uh, and then you could put a third floor either in that same block or you can add on top of the basketball court and pool another 10,000 square feet. So you, have, uh, you can either go 30, 40 and 42 different ways. So that a 40,000 square foot building is what we've been talking about based upon um, $325 a square foot is about $13 million. Third, 325 a square foot is probably on the light side. So if you did 350, you're at $14 million. Okay. Does anyone know how big Newtown Center is? Just so you kind of get like a general idea. No, I, um, 
I don't off the top of my head. I don't. Yeah, know. I can't remember. I, I don't have the file in front of me. Okay. I want to say fifty, but 50. that's a guess. I'm thinking they're on the same between fifty and sixty, somewhere in that area. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's, hey, Mike, it's all Mike, one. What size floor. is our community center now, for footprint wise? Do you know offhand? I don't know, but I can tell you. Looking at it right now, it's probably. 15, 12, 15. Okay. Okay. Three, well, it's three stories, right? Yes. Yes. Basement for a second. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the basketball court is a small, it's a small court. It's not a 5,000 square foot court. Correct. So, and the, and the basement really is, is chopped up. You got boiler rooms down there. So it's probably not even that all, all that full, you know, um, But I can I can do a uh, I can get send out that information to uh, to you. I can do a you know, so I can search online or I can uh, do a, a Google Earth. Uh, so. All right. So well, let me ask you this question. Um, and I know parking is would be an issue, but would this building fit in the open field at the community center? Um, I believe so. It'll be very close. Okay. Um, so theoretically, we could stick this in that field um, and then eventually knock the other building down, <coughs> excuse me, or potentially even keep the gym standing as an auxiliary gym and then knock the rest of the building down uh, and have parking. I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say yes or no on to that because I don't know how. I can't remember if that gym was constructed after. Probably was constructed afterwards. Uh, but it might not have the proper bracing. If I may, it. I believe it was an after built. Was right. After but they may have used that party wall to the building for bracing. And if you take that building up. down, you may not be able. You know, keep that building standing. Okay. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's probably a costly item. I, I do know if, if basically if you use that lot, the, the field, you maybe don't go in a, this lineal rectangle type uh, environment. Maybe you do a L shape mm -hmm. and you can make it a little bit differently and, and definitely would fit that way. I'm okay. just thinking the size of this building is uh, 5,100. It's 200 lineal feet long. You know, that's pretty close. That's a softball field, and that's pretty close. So if, so if this building were put in the field, um, to build it based on estimates 14 million, what would demolition be to take that building down and turn it into a parking lot? The existing community center. Is it clean of asbestos? Uh, let's say that it is. Okay. There's. Is there oil tanks in the ground there? Uh, yes. Tim's shaking his head, so I think so. I remember. Yeah. Uh, if I recall, our. Um, Can't remember we took it out or not. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to try to think our inventory when we did the town inventory. I thought there was a uh, boy, uh, oil tank there, uh, but it, I would say a couple hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Without any hazardous material? The 14 million. So let's say we were at a different location and let's just use the area behind stop and shop. That 14 million is just for the building that does not include parking and anything else. Uh, correct. So, you know, I, I, we'll get, I'll try and get some better pricing. Uh, generally, uh, site development runs about three hundred thousand dollars an acre okay to do finished site development i think based off all these numbers that we're you know obviously shooting from the hip on us we're we're probably looking at 15 million i think it may be a couple yeah. of bucks higher than that but we're probably in that range for site development the building uh taking oil tanks out or whatever it is Without having to buy land, correct. Without having to buy land. So that's, you know, then that becomes, okay, regionalization, 
maybe a good talking point and getting, you know, obviously with regionalization comes a financial commitment, which has got to go on paper and all that fun stuff. Uh, in, term, in terms of construction grants and their availability, I think that's something that uh, the town finance department or the grants person or whatever title that person has now has got to start looking. I know the feds have a lot of different programs out there. We've got a new administration coming in, which maybe they're, you know, they talk infrastructure and I know that could be trains and roads and stuff like that, but maybe as some sort of offshoot through the fed DOT or something like that, or even the community development under HUD to see what is, could be out there without not committing obviously, but searching for funding for this has got to start probably very soon just to get a working idea because if stuff opens up financially either through Washington or pass through to from Washington to the state you want to kind of be in line at the head of the line as best you can be rather than it's like the old ARRA money back in 2009 when that hit through the Obama administration a lot of towns didn't get the money they thought they were going to get because their projects weren't of the stage of being planned fully or ready for construction in a lot of cases. But I think uh, just, you know, some Googling as to what might be there is probably something we want to start on. Yeah, I just give you an idea on some uh, cost of land. I believe I'm not sure it was the Galuzzi property. I think it was. They were asking like $800,000. And there's yeah. only probably maybe an acre and a half of developable land. The rest is the whole mountain. <laughs> we'll build you it know, sideways so, on the hill. Yeah. Um, that's why, you know, you really have to put it together with the Anderson property, which has, you know, a similar type environment, but it's, it's flat. So you, have, you can pick up two, three acres there. That gives you about, you know, a hundred thousand square feet of land to work with for parking and uh, building. So that's tacking on even more than what we're talking about here, simply yeah. because so up we have the land. Yeah. yeah. So now we're up to 16 million. And you know, to Tim's point, yeah, could this go to 17, 18 with underwriting costs and legal and all of that stuff? Yeah, wouldn't take much. That's why looking for money is, you know, something that maybe wants to start out. Just to see. Now you could, if you use the uh, the old community center land, you could probably design this building so that you could add on later on. So you can make the building smaller. That's why I'm talking about programming. What programs do we need? You know, what are, what uses? Who's going in here? Do we need, you know, twenty or thirty or forty thousand square feet of of uh, community use outside of the pool and basketball court and the locker rooms and the fitness center. I mean, right. you, or do you really look at the YMC, you know, the YMCA moving their off their, their, their regionalization here? I know uh, the YMCA <laughs> wanted to go into Oxford, into uh, Haynes's property over there, but they couldn't work out a deal. Yeah, I've, I've had uh, multiple conversations with the folks um, from YMCA. Who'd you talk to, Kurt? Did you call, talk to Dave? Uh, no, um, I don't have their cards in front of me. Um, oh, God, Tim and... Uh, Got to call talk to Dave, who's the executive director of the uh, Coastal YMCA. I think it's Coastal or something. I can, I can talk yeah, to him. I think Tim Bartlett is the COO. Yeah, I would say, yeah, because okay. these were the, yeah. I, I have their cards. I just can't picture them. But, um, you know, because we talked about a lot of different options, um, you know, at the minimum, they would love to come and run. If we have a pool, run the entire aquatics program for us. Um, so, again, trying to take some of that cost Boy, burden that. off of us. But they did have interest in um, the, the regionalization model where maybe they built it if they can come up with the financing and then, you know, we leased it back from them or, uh, they were certainly open to any type of arrangement um, that would make sense for them and, and for us. So they were, they seemed very willing well, to, 
to do that. That 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 may not be a bad option if this the uh, the town leases a portion back. They're going to borrow under the uh, pretense of uh, the town of Seymour, which would give them uh, that would leverage their uh, borrowing capacity. Right. Bill, is there any advantage to them borrowing the money as opposed to the town? It it depends. Uh... You know, if you have a private placement, so if the town if the town borrows it, there's a better chance of it being uh, tax exempt to the bondholder the income. Yeah. Than if a if, if a not for profit does it, but um, the one the one question I have is, and I think I just either you or Mike mentioned it, uh, YMCA goes out let's say and borrows uh, ten million dollars, whatever it is of their share we have to be very careful that the town is does not get uh looped in as the grantor on that debt so you have overlapping debt because if something financially happened to them boom we plop 10 million dollars right. on our on our balance sheet and the rating agencies you you automatically if you get into an arrangement like that then the town automatically has a note in their financial statements, which the underwriters would see as being guarantor on overlapping debt of whatever, how much on behalf of who, for what purpose. So that's, that's a, it's a risky transaction, but I think, um, again, we're in the infancy, see what they can do because it's got to be hashed out with attorneys anyway. And we just have to be careful of the town's position in terms of, would their expectations be we're their guarantor or would their financing group, however they got, whoever they got their money from, would they want to say, well, gee, you know, it's, it's really for the town of Seymour you're doing this. So, Hey, town of Seymour, we want you to sign like buying a car and having a, you know, somebody sign the note. Right. I mean, the 15 million for 30 years, we're probably looking just, just below seven hundred thousand a year. Yeah, give or take. Principal yeah. yeah. Yeah, give or take. Like six eighty so five somewhere you're, in there. You talk you're talking seven tenths of a mil. Yeah. Right right from the get go, not counting anything else that might be going on. That's why it's critical to the I, I think it's critical to define the space, what the expectations are, while at the same time looking at the regionalization and, and using the why is thinking of regionalization in that sense too, or Beacon Falls or whomever to send the feelers out. So that I think will provide us with some kind of direction because, you know, if, if Beacon Falls says, well, we'd like to see, uh, oh, five, five program rooms where we could run this and this and this. Well, how big, how, what's the expectations? Uh, oh, pool in a basketball court? Yeah, well, okay, we'd like this or this. That's why I think the, the feelers going out and the information collection, that's a place to start because that's going to drive your dollars without any question. And if, 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 if the town's land at the community center is more viable than going behind stop and shop because we own the land and, you know, uh, that's that's always cheaper. Uh, yeah, maybe this thing falls into place. But I, I think, you know, for sake of argument, and we can't have this as a one, runaway train, maybe we set some kind of preliminary limitation. And let's say, what can we get for 14 million? Or what can we get for 15 million? Setting some kind of dollar values to equate to our expectations of what we want in this building. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, as well, working with um, the seniors and I do the programs for the past five years now. So if you guys have any questions at all, I mean, at least I could tell you what myself, Mary Tar, our department feels that we need. Um, yeah. Well, I think we need to know that. Yeah. So, I mean, like I said, kind of like I, if you guys would like me to go, um, Kind of looking at this model right now, um, a big thing would be like the multi-purpose basketball court with dividers. So with um, with that being said, because we do run various um, leagues at once, different basketball leagues, we are currently in the schools right now, um, but it would be nice to have multiple um, gyms. 
Um, we do have a very um, big senior population that does exercise classes through us. So two large exercise rooms, about to be able to hold like 30 people, that's something else as well. So we'll be able to run our Zoom at the same time. We'll be able to run um, our different yeah. programs um, with the seniors. Um, obviously, the school, a locker room, um, we're looking at possibly like a banquet hall as well. Um, we do bingo in the banquet hall. We do other programs as well. We do luncheons for the seniors. Um, we do do various things with them. But that we have. Do you have an idea? Do you have an idea of how many rooms? From what you said, how many rooms that would be out of this whole facility? So for we, the we have to reduce it all on paper anyway. But if you've got five different things, well, does that equate to five program rooms of? whatever dimensions yeah. you know, so stuff I, like that I mentioned the programs like the two the two large exercise rooms that could fit like our zumba for our seniors that could fit our pio our yoga um our pilates all those programs can fit in those two larger exercise rooms um the banquet hall you can do bingo in there um so i mean to answer your question it would be two one three like five rooms and that doesn't account the administrative offices okay do well, the seniors those, play basketball are those used every day or what? Are they used every day? Which rooms? You know, like the, the uh, exercise rooms, the lunch. Well, the, uh, the well before COVID happened, yes. They, we have a fitness center, which they would use. We have a card room. We also have like a band jam where the seniors would come in and play. Um, and pretty much what we would do is we'd have to stagger times throughout the day instead of having everyone be able to come in at that 10 o'clock yeah. slot when they first wake up or that they have to go, all right, well, I'll come in at three o'clock in the afternoon. So it would be staggered throughout the day. Because oh. because we're doing the Ansonia Senior Center, and okay. you know the they're looking at about seven thousand square feet, which mm -hmm. is pretty big. Um, but I don't see that being used one hundred percent of the time all day long. Our you senior, know, um, yeah, I mean, like I said before, like the COVID obviously happened and everything. Yeah. Our seniors are pretty religious on they, they played a lot of cards there. They played their Mahjong. They've always asked for like a lounge with like a pool table to be able to use and stuff like that. I think they want to get out of the house and want to be at the center with us. Um, they were utilizing the little rooms that we had there right now as best as they can. But at times, like I said, we'd have to stagger them. So we'd have to cancel some programs to be able to bring in other ones because like I said, the rooms wouldn't match up with timing. All right, so my, my thinking is because of the way you look at this building, mm -hmm. do we look at a fatter building allowing the seniors to be in a, like a small senior center area um, that gives them their own space, but adjacent to the, it's connected to the building, but it's not, we're going, they're not going into the building upstairs into these other functions. Like having so their own, have, yeah, their own small senior center. Yep. You know, one in looking at Newtown, um, I think one of the things that I, if they could change, and Rory and Tim, you were with me, so I mean, jump in if I'm not saying this right. It, it, the, the seniors seem to use the facility, you know, up in, in the morning and into the early afternoon, and then they clear out, and then the next kind of group comes in, which is you know, the kids and then, the, you know, the adults coming home from work. So I seem to recall them saying they wish they did not have the separation like that because okay. they spent more money than they needed to when they could have designed it that seniors kind of have the predominant use in the morning, early afternoon, and then it switches over. So it goes from a senior center to more of a recreation type thing. Does that mean they have Correct. excess space Correct. because of the timing? Oh, I would think they would say that, yeah, because yes. there's okay. huge parts of the building right. that were, when we were there were just empty. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. I mean, hey, Zach, have you ever seen the community center yet up there? At the new you... I did, yeah. I went and met Matt up there, and he, she toured uh, Mary and myself around there. Yes, we did. What were your thoughts on that? Um, I thought it was a nice facility. Um, I mean, I thought the hallways were a little large. I think they kind of cut those down a little bit, but um, I definitely liked the pool. I did like all the side rooms they did have, though. I know they had a spread. They had, like, their own, like, exercise studio with the mirrors i know they had their own um classroom like child care room as well which could be another option for us i think that's a big thing um i know they did, did the pool was very nice i like the shallow and the lap lane they did yeah. they, they don't have a gym there though correct 
No, I, I, there was no actual full gym there. Correct. Yeah, that is something I think we do really need here is a multi-purpose court um, that the seniors can use and the kids and adults. We do run a lot of adult leagues as well. Um, Correct. Well, they have, they have the athletic league right next to it, uh, whatever Correct. it is yeah. called, which is just insane, that place. Yeah. That could, they, could you technically use the basketball court or the gym for their uh, large functions if they had a you know, a bingo day or a luncheon or something like that. Right, right now we do use, we do use that. We don't use it for the bingo and for the luncheons because we don't put the food and everything, but we do use like, for instance, our exercise classes, like around 30, 35 people, we do put them in the gym right now. Currently. Yes. Before COVID, obviously I'm speaking. Yeah. There's but, definitely certain areas you can overlap and reuse you know, throughout the day yeah. on scheduling wise. Um, comparing, I just looked at it, it was 45,000 square feet was the new town one. 45,000. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there was, you know, a lot of the bells and whistles of wasted space. Yep. So in my eyes, you're probably, there's a probably about 15,000 square foot of just wasted space in that building. Okay. At least. So but, I mean, in, in hearing all this, so at that third floor, we'll call it third floor option one, uh, could one of those larger rooms then kind of be a multi-purpose room where it is um set up for we put some kitchen type equipment in there and then it could it could be a, a banquet hall it could also be a large meeting room would that make sense you know multi-purpose like that on the third floor yeah i mean yes but then again like even like newtown they had that little luncheonette downstairs when you first walked in which i think was a great idea they had the, the special needs kids that came in and ran you know, work right. there for at the at the place, um, something like that on the third floor when it worked. But like, but going back to Newtown, they had that full kitchen. Well, they had actually they had two full kitchens. They had two full kitchens, which were yeah. a little too much. They had one for the senior center in itself. Then plus they had their banquet hall one. Um, would if you took that banquet hall and put that on the third floor? Yeah, that would be great. That would that would definitely be um, usable space. And that can be used for bingo. That can be used for a lot of things. I think if, if on our, our, our team right now, if they haven't seen that space, I think it would be a good idea for them to tour it just to get a gist of what, what they did for $15 million versus what, you know, again, it's, as soon as you see, you see what's, what's good and what's bad about it in my eyes. Yeah. I, I mean, doing the math, if you're to what, to your point, Tim, if they spent 15 million, and as a rough estimate, a third of it is excess space, to, I guess, to use that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you do the math, is it may be too simplistic, but if you're coming down from 15, then you're down to 10. Yeah. And is that is that realistic? Maybe. I mean, if we know the sins they committed, so we don't commit them, then, yeah, that's a plus in our favor to lay out again the size of this thing again coming back to how many rooms and what do we do with it and the pool and the court and whatever but yeah no i think that's i think that's real helpful you know especially you guys that are familiar with it you know i mean just off this conversation well they put two kitchens in we don't need two kitchens they put wide wide hallways in we don't need wide wide hallways i mean that that type of stuff translates to dollars correct yeah they had the, the money after the after the uh shooting so they, what was it? General Electric gave them five or yeah. $10 million toward the community center. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, to benefit the community. So yeah. they, they went a little. General Electric. Uh, yeah. They went a little crazy with the money. Uh, hey, you know how architects will, architects will spend every dollar, every nickel. <laughs> exactly. Yes, they will. <laughs> do, I guess, I guess, do we my, know, do my we goal, know what I'm thinking is we want to be able to run multiple at the same time. Because right, right now, what we're doing is we're staggering activities throughout the day because we don't have enough space. So if we're able to run multiple activities throughout the day in these different program rooms, I think that would be uh, a run for us. Yeah. And again, you're going from what your usable space right now, you know, shoot off the top of my head, what, 8,000 square feet, maybe 10,000 square feet. Give or take. And that's, that's, you know, being generous of what you have right now mm -hmm. um, to, you know, something that's actually twice to three times the size of what you have right now. Correct. In, th in looking at this, if we're talking... Uh, to Kurt's point, uh, he, they got $5 million or whatever towards the community from GE or whomever. Uh, did they bond the rest of it? Yeah. 
Okay. So that's what I remember. All right. I mean, it's a lot easier to load to do 10 million than it is 15. Yeah, yeah. But we may well, not need 15. Hopefully we don't. I don't know. Well, I, I'm gonna be, if you know, we get it down into that 10 million range, so now maybe you're looking more towards the high fours, give or well, take, yeah. for your principal well, and interest payments. We can almost fit that directly into, no. you know, if we keep our debt service line level, we can almost fit that in and, and pay without any impact to the mill rate. Well, that's, we have, that, that's the home run. I mean, yeah, if, we, if we design this, we, we cleared about three, we tried to clear about $300,000 of space to be able to go into a public private partnership um, with a 30 year, you know, lease purchase type arrangement with a developer where we could spend about 300,000 or so uh, with zero impact to the mill rate. That's the way this was designed. Um, so the closer we get to that number, the, the easier it's going to be to fit into the budget. Well, I, I think, and that all comes back to exactly what everybody on this call has said. What kind of size is it? And, and maybe we make the assumption, and I don't know, we make the assumption that the senior center land is going to be the fit for it, for the hell of it, to just for the sake of being able to put stuff on paper and see for size and utility space and all that what it is and then at the same time reaching out to the context you know to beacon falls or ansonia y or whomever to see what we can do with this so maybe it starts to come together a little now, bit more than than it is mr now, i put a uh, fitness center in it do we need a fitness center we do, yes yeah. we do need a fitness center yes okay seniors use it we do yeah we do right now it's a small one because of the space we got but they do use it throughout the day yes Okay. I think, I think Fred's trying to speak. Go ahead, Fred. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes. I like what Mr. Sawicki just mentioned. I think, I think it would be a good idea based upon the research and the work that Mike has already put into this project that we concentrate on the current community center property and see what we can fix there. And keep in mind the other options, but concentrate on that property. We own the land. It's close to downtown. I think it would be conducive to at least start at that point. I like that idea. So building it, I just think building it in that open field building it and then the taking the existing field. building down for parking. Right, and concentrate on a plan, see how it fits and how it works out on that property at this point. And we can explore everything else too. Okay. I mean, if we save a million dollars cost of land, that's a that's a big nut in terms of debt service. Oh, it's huge. I mean, what I'd like to do, and and I'm glad we're having all these conversations and kind of putting different things out. Um, you know, the community center has use of uh, a survey monkey tool, for lack of a, a better um, example. I'd like to get a bunch of ideas and try to survey the community. So if we could narrow down maybe one or two locations, um, yeah. one or two building sizes, and then even if we could put a list of, hey, what type of programs would you like to see? And they simply check, put the checks down. I, I think that would be great because if we could narrow this down knowing that, hey, we're going to be at the community center and focus there, obviously that makes it, uh, that makes our work a little bit easier because we know kind of what we're working with. And yeah, I, I, think, I think that's a good idea also because we have to look at selling this project to the public. If we start right. getting the public involved early on, people will feel that they have a stake in the project so right. that we can sell it down the road. We always have to be keeping in mind how we're going to market this project to pass. Yeah, well, Kurt, that's a good idea, Kurt, to use SurveyMonkey. The only problem is, is the senior population. Some of them are on computers, not a lot of them are. So to reach them, you kind of have to, to figure out what they would want. I have to look at a different route to use. Could you put yeah. could you put paper sir a paper survey equivalent to what would be on Survey Monkey at the senior center for those that don't have computers? They can pick up one of them and fill them out by hand. We can, but like I said, right now with the COVID and everything, really. No, understood. No, understood. Yeah. Or even even to the extent that if you mail if you did a survey and you have a mailing list send a survey out to the people. 
Yep, we could definitely do that. We have a mailing list, so we could definitely do mail for sure. Yep. Yeah, I mean, because this way you capture those with and put on it. If you can answer this by computer, you don't need to fill this out. Yeah, I think that would be that's a good idea. Yep. You know, this way um, you know, it's covered. It, one thing that one thing to keep in mind, um, if we use the community center lot, we'll call it, uh, we're gonna have to relocate the skate park. Put it in the river. Well, Bill, you said Bill, you said that not me. So we'll have to well, uh, you know, we'll have to come up with a location well, for that. It, it, it well, may be you may be able to relocate on it? the other side of the parcel. Yeah. When it's all said and done. Yeah, okay. well, once you know the plot plan, then who knows? You may could maybe you could slip it in someplace. Right. Do we know of any restrictions being that close to the water? Because I know we were running into something down by um, Public Works. They ran into issues for an old building they were looking to do. Isn't there a soil issue on that field too? We, um, I'd have to go back and, and check the notes. I'm, I'm not sure if Anne Marie's still here. Um, but there was some issue with, we were going to put a police, uh, like a storage building there for uh, vehicles for police and fire and, and so on. Uh, there was some issue with, I believe it was arsenic in the soil. We had it tested and I believe it's okay. But I don't want to speak out of turn on that. Kurt, I, Kurt, I can speak on that. Okay, go ahead. So it's uh, natural occurring. Actually, it's below the levels. There are no contaminants on the ground that would put any ELURs, environmental limited use restrictions on that property. So if we had to put the pool or anything like that using the ground, skate park is currently there now. The park is used for the hurricanes when they're practicing as well as soccer. So everything in the ground is meets the Connecticut regulations and the land use restrictions. Okay. The only yeah. thing we may run into is a 200 year floodplain. Uh, uh, yep, and you guys are grandfathered with that. Right. So if, if I could, Kurt, a little bit on that, there sure. is talk about the uh, the Kinneytown Dam and what FERC does. It all depends on what FERC does with that dam. Um, if they do take, you know, if something is done, it, it may actually change the floodplain and I'll leave it at that. Okay. But you guys are grandfathered. Um, and so, and this would be a, a good question as well for uh, maybe Jim uh, or Brian. Do we have any zoning issues with the neighbors based on dropping a huge building right there? There is that one house right there. I'm not sure. The one that right behind the building, behind the bocce court, is that, are people living in that house? There was a for sale sign up last, I mean, I could check tomorrow, but um, I think there might be. Um, there was a for sale sign, it's not there any longer. Okay, and then there's the house on the other side, we'll call it right field. Yeah. Um, on yeah. the other side of, of the street. There's so a few that's something we'll have to street. check into as well. Mm -hmm. And then the church has that portion of the parking lot as well, the church that's right there, they, have, they own that back parking lot. Yeah, which we have, uh, we have agreements for use with them. Perfect. Um, on that, we, I mean, we'd probably have to go back and um, re-examine those because I don't, yeah. um, you know, I don't think we contemplated having something this big there, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, at the time. So, but uh, the church is very good about uh, sharing the parking lot with us. So, since I mean, we did pay to put it in. Mm -hmm. So, um, all right, so. Is, is it safe to say that looking at this design that we have up on the screen in front of us? This is not uh, a design, by the way. This is just a block diagram, just for well, spacing. Like, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> for my simplistic thing. If, what if we were to send this back to its creator, being Mike, and have Mike kind of just put some little lines in how we could fit some things in here based on the discussion? Because we now know that... I'm sorry? On the site, based on all the items that uh, Zach needs. Yeah, have it one that might fit on the community center lot and then one on a lot that would be behind Stop and Shop. Does that seem good? I can't see everybody with the screen share, so I don't know if everybody's nodding or what, but. Yeah. Why not? Do you have the square footage that they're gonna give up, possibly give up for behind Stop and Shop? 
Say that again, Tim. Do we, do we oh, have a lot size that he's willing to give up or a, a we don't. ballpark? We don't. I think it, we should design what we think we would like. Well, and then that's what we would bring to to Tom, if that's the route we were going to go. Okay. Hey, yeah, Marie, maybe you can help on this one. Where is the pools? Uh, how far behind stop and shop to those pools that we used to be Bridgeport Brass? Ooh, how far are those pools? I'd have to actually see that map for that. Um, I don't know if any of those, I mean, I know uh, Bill probably remembers the pools, in? but everybody else is pretty young. <laughs> yeah, I, re I remember the pools. I can I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, they used to glow at night. And Bill's yes, swam in the pools. Did. Yes, they did. I, the lagoon, you mean? Yeah. Uh, I'm pool, lagoon, same thing. Pool, <laughs> lagoons. I thought those were filled in. They were, but they but all you're doing is capping those. Yeah. Um. So you may not be able to build on those caps unless you go up above the surface. It depends. I don't know how deep the pad, the, the, the uh, caps are because then you got to worry about foundations and uh, things like that. And it depends on what environmental, you know, what ELURs were put on that property as well. You know, ELUR stands for? Oh, environmental limited use restriction. Sorry. Flux capacitor. That's right. <laughs> And if that's the case, then we see where the you could see where the lagoons are, and maybe put the pool in a different area. But it all depends on again where they are, and what restrictions are put there. Would the building department have the diagrams for all of that? Um, I don't know if the building department would have the diagrams because once the property was sold, it goes nothing is there, so. They wouldn't have any debt, huh? Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, just, just You're the old. Right, the old they may right. have the old maps. Yep. The yeah. Old maps. The building would have the old maps. We can look there. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that might get curious because they. I remember when I worked there in the summers, going to going to school. I mean, they in the wire, uh, the chemical building towards the back. I don't know in perspective how far that would be back, given what stop and shop is and whatever. But you know they had some nasty stuff there, and you didn't want to you didn't want to go near it. But oh, maybe stop. the old maps or the, the the plot plans or whatever you call them, maybe in the building department they've got the old stuff that at least would give you some idea of where stuff is. It, it'd either be in the building department or the fire department, um, the fire marshal's office, because they maybe. would send in all their their data to the fire marshal. Maybe so, um, yeah. That's that's a place I would start with the fire marshal's building. And department, sorry, and then go into the building department. So the land right behind Stop and Shop is owned by Stop and Shop. Uh, no, I think no. it's owned by Haynes. Haynes. Yeah, Haynes. right where the where the parking lot ends, kind of the back where the loading docks are. Yep. It's not more than a hundred feet off those loading docks. Okay, so the the then that's probably. The stop and shop is probably where the lagoons are. Okay. Could be. They could have capped it and because they're not, yeah. you know, they, they're not a child care center. They're not, you know, right. have a pool, they, that possibility. I know that stop and shop did, uh, they did cap that stop and shop when they built that. Um, so it may not be an issue. Right. The only thing, it may be an issue when you go to deal, uh, drill and go to cap, but we can, we can see maybe they could put a, a barrier down. Uh, before we pour our foundation. Yeah. I, I can also give Tom a call, find out, yeah. you know, what he knows. Because he's going to, we're going to be asking him to turn it over anyway. Yeah, we just want to make sure that we don't have any liability issues with that. Right. And the Transfer Act is uh, changing. So, you know, I'm not quite sure what the new changes have put into that one, but um, we can we can see from there as well. Okay. The transfer, I'm, I'm sorry, if, if you don't know what the Transfer Act is, the Transfer Act is when you sell a piece of property that has contaminated soil or has used hazardous waste, um, it has to go through the Transfer Act for liability purposes to clean it up. 
The um, again, the, the other thing to keep in mind, if <clears throat> if we build it on the community center land, it's it's purely going to be debt service. Um, if we build it behind stop and shop, we have the potential of using it to anchor some type of development similar to uh, Oxford. Um, mm -hmm. So again, that, that's something to consider there as well when we talk about how this fits into to the budget. Uh, I, I don't remember off the top of my head um, without looking back at my notes, all of the numbers for uh, what Quarry Walk generates for the town of Oxford, but um, it would more than pay for. Oh, it's so, probably, you know, over a million dollars in taxes right now. Yeah. So, you know, if, you know, that's something to keep in mind as well. While, you know, we have additional costs for being, uh, we, we, we save costs, excuse me, for being at the community center because we don't have to acquire the land. You know, there could be some value. And I think when we kind of put this together, we have to look at that, that if there was some type of commitment from, from Tom, and I know that he is interested in this, uh, that over a 20 year period, a certain amount of development is put in, it could substantially reduce our long-term costs for this. Um, and, you know, we could even talk to him about, uh, you know, a lease purchase type thing where certain development milestones have to be hit for extra dollars to come in and, and different things like that. So um, the, the other, the other aspect, what I talk about is that if he does the building, builds the building, the town won't be subject to prevailing wages. Correct. Could save another million dollars. Correct. Correct. So there's a lot of advantages. So I think, that the, are we all in agreement that these are the two locations that we should kind of be focused on at this point? And I can't, Suzanne, I can't see you and I can't see Tim anymore. Um, just because as people talk, you kind of move around on my screen. I'll talk. Um, go ahead, Suzanne, and then Tim. Sure, I agree that those two are good locations to um, to look into further to you know see um, where our options are. And I'd, I'd be willing to work with Zach if he wants on the program side, or if someone wants to go to Newtown, I'd be happy to go with someone else to observe that too. Okay. Um, Tim, you're, you're good with those two? Yep, I'm good with those two, those two brought parcels. Okay, uh, Zach, Fred, you guys just kind of working my way back up the rows. <laughs> yeah, I'm good with those two locations. Okay, Fred? Yes, I'm good with the two locations. With the caveat, as I stated earlier, I'd like to see us concentrate on the current site at the com of the community center. Oh, okay. And then uh, uh, Bill and Mike, or Diane, it says. Yeah, yeah, I'm renting her iPad. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. Uh, the, the two locations seem to be the most practical and plausible without having to go out and worry about Tritown and, and Spectre and, and any other place in town. So I think we got a starting point and start to get some information. Hey, Kurt, do you want... Um me to take the role and do the survey on survey monkey and if you guys have anything you want me to add in you guys can email me so i can add it on i can talk to mary and tara uh, yeah we'll have you do that but i think we'll go one one more meeting because what i want to do is kind of take a look at um see what mike comes back with okay so i think after our february meeting which is basically in two weeks yep um i think we can do that and we could put because what this will do is I think when Mike comes back with his uh, block diagrams, yep. uh, at that point, we can kind of sit down and come up with a list of, you know, basketball court, fitness center, um, dance studio, everything, and, and come up with a list of maybe 15 or 20 things, and then have the residents go and check the things that they think are important. Okay. Uh, right. And then knowing that how, we, and then we can come back and kind of fit those into Mike's diagram. All right, sounds good. Um, okay. Um, so let's see here. I, I couldn't even tell you where we are on the agenda at this point because we've kind of bounced from uh, four, four, five, and six. But is there anything that anybody thinks we haven't just at least put on the table yet? 
Let me ask a question on the pool. Does it make sense to have the pool available for summer use by opening up the exterior walls? That's a great idea, yes. Yeah, it's a great idea. Great idea. <coughs> and I'm not sure, Mike, what you put for that pool size, but I'm not saying like I don't need an Olympic size pool, but if we do a pool big enough to be able to host meets, it's also a way to generate some revenue to host these different meets. I got 100 by 50. 100. Oh, I can't see. It's so small on my screen. Okay. 100 by 50, 5,000 square foot pool. Okay, cool. Yeah. So by, by putting in an operable, uh, you know, wall, a wall there, you can open it up for the summertime. And, and yeah, it's a great it, idea. You know, summer recreation. That's an awesome idea. Yes. Great idea. So I have never, I've never seen it anywhere else, but it's, I, I think about that. I say, why not take it and take advantage of it? Yep. That's. Perfect. I think Hamden high school had that. Um, there's some YMCA's that had that as well. I have to think back where they were. I, 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 I think you're right um, on that one. And I thought there was another school ahead because I remember going to a meet there for one and they opened the, the, the wall in the summertime. Well, that, just, that just made it 16 million. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Tim, there's a lot of economic, economically uh, uh, ways to build a building. Yeah. <laughs> You garage door, the garage door opener is going to keep breaking. Somebody's going to lose it, and you know it's going to be a whole, it's going to be a whole to do. Of course, Zach's going to be there hand cranking that baby up every summer. I will do a smile on my face if you get me a pool like that. I'll do it with a smile on my face every day. <laughs> yeah. So, Mike, you... just, Mike, one question on the pool: um, yes. Is it because you know when we went and we looked at Newtown, Newtown had a pool. I mean, to Zach's point, it was smaller. Right. But it also connected to it. It had a therapy section. It kind of had a kid section. It had the zero entry section. I mean, are we talking just well, a swimming pool like the high school has or? No, I think you probably have to do something. Well, you got to have a handicap accessible anyway. Right. So right. Uh, that's going to have to be part of it. Um, the therapy, you know, we ought to look at that. I mean, how much use you get out of the, the cost of putting something like that in. And that's really Zach Thomas, you know, uh, from, from, from a therapy standpoint, doesn't Griffin have a pool in their uh, breast uh, cancer center? You know, from a therapy, pool therapy. But the Huntington one, uh, I know for a fact that a lot of the physical therapists use that uh, pool up in Huntington. Yeah. So we can look at that. Because again, we have to look at that. Because, you know, if, we, we still have the pool at the high school. Um, so, it's, you know, to Zach's point, if, you know, we take some of the, the pressure off of the high school pool, um, could we still generate the revenue through there? And now you look at the community center pool as more, uh, you know, swim lessons and recreational swim, and then maybe leave the high school pool for, you know, the high school team and then like the Wildcat Swim Club and, and stuff like that. Swim as well. Seniors will swim as well, too. Yeah. But I mean, this, the seniors, do they need the, uh, what, the long course, short course? I, I don't know the difference. No, 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 no. I, don't think so. I mean, they don't need a, a long one. They could, you know, a decent sized one. Like they have a new town could work for them, correct? That is correct. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, yeah, we can look at that. Okay. And, and again, obviously it all comes down to uh, cost. And, and Mike, can you play around too with, and again, I'm not a builder, so you may laugh at me when I ask this question, but um, different levels, you know, does the pool and the gym have to be on the first floor? Does it make sense to, you know, put the gym over the, the pool? I'm just making things up. Um, does that reduce well, there's, there's, costs in any way? Uh, not, not really, uh, because you got height issues. Uh, both, both those elements really require two stories. Okay. Okay. So, um, you know, the pool should be, you, you can put the pool all over something, but it's not going to get you anything. I think it's going to be more costly from a structural standpoint. Um, the basketball court, yes, you can put the basketball court on top of that, but you're going to be up pretty high then. Right. You know, right. You're going to be up almost four stories. So, right. you know, I don't know if you want to do that. Now, can you put them side by side or face to face and make them close or put, you know, a uh, common entry into them. 
So the building is different. Yeah, you can do a lot of things from a design standpoint, but I think they really should be independent. And then you, you can fill around them with a two-story building. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cost. The cost element is uh, is a factor. The, the 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 smaller footplate is generally cheaper because you got less uh, foundation to work with that you have to pay to put foundation in. So, uh, but this type of building is a little different because you got two story buildings both in the pool and the, in the gym. Right. Okay. Um. I'm just checking all my notes. Got to make sure I haven't missed anything. Uh, one of the things, and, and Zach, I know you had brought this up a little bit earlier, and I don't know how much we've touched on it. Um, how important is outdoor space attached or around this building? Um, I think if obviously if, if it goes to the current community community center location, uh, there's really basically going to be no outdoor space. If it goes to the area behind stop and shop uh, with this anchoring potential mixed development, it might be too expensive to have, uh, you know, we'll call them fields around the building. So is, is that a key thing or are we okay with the fact that the community center may not have much, if any, outdoor space? If we're able to have an area that has that space, a small, small field space and maybe a playground, and then we already have the pool there. We could run our summer playground camp right out of the community center, which I think would be big. And we don't need to be at the schools or the other areas around town. I'll know more once I uh, fit the building on the site at the community center. Um, as for, you know, the Haynes property, it's really up to Tom whether he wants to give up more property. Right. I, I got a feeling that's going to be pretty valuable too. <laughs> Yeah. Just have a, you know, a football field type thing or a baseball field. Uh, Mike, can you try to uh, fit in uh, a playscape? Yes. Yes. As well. Zach, do you guys do any uh, daycare, you said? Did I hear you there? Um, we don't. Right now we run a pre-K camp out of our community center, but that okay, would be so pre down the road. We'd like to explore the building that allow it. Yes, a child care. Okay. All right, and then the, the last two things, and I think uh, we've kind of covered everything at least initially until our next meeting when we can finalize and then get the surveys going. Um, you know, we had the building currently has two other uses right now, uh, the Boys and Girls Club and the Seymour Oxford Food Bank. Um, uh, I don't know if or how we could accommodate the Boys and Girls Club because of just the size uh, that they have, or, you know, does it make sense to uh, trying to integrate that into the building. I don't know. We could talk about that, but I, and, and again, I don't know if that would change the the setup of the building anyway, but what do we do with the Seymour Oxford food bank? Do we try to include this in uh, into the building or do we look to move the Seymour Oxford food bank to another location in Seymour? It's probably PR wise, I think if we made the effort to try to put it as part of what we're doing, now I don't know how much space they'd need or anything like that, but I think you might have a better public relations sell on this if you also said that, oh, by the way, we're taking the, the food bank and we're also including it in what we're doing. Plus those people that you know are hard up and they need help, it's a, it could be a focal point where they go creating some more traffic and people and, and all of that. Does the site, the current site, um, give the, the, provide a benefit to those users? Can they get there by, they get there by car? Do they, is public transportation needed? Who uses the food bank? Seniors, anybody, everybody? There's okay. everyone and everyone. I actually do deliveries for them on Tuesdays. I help out with them. And they're anywhere from 40s up to 60s. There are people that go there if they have their cars. If they don't have their cars, um, we bring it to them. We actually used to offer transportation for them as well, the people that could not get to the food bank. But that was obviously before COVID happened. 
And Tim, what would you say? They have about 2,000 square feet in that area downstairs? Yeah, now they do. I mean, with, with the extra space that we did give them that the Boys and Girls Club was using, um, we gave to them temporarily that, that downstairs cafeteria area, which they expanded. Right. So, yeah, probably anywhere between 1,500 and 2,000 square feet. Yeah, you, you probably you you probably got a better or a, more help to sell this whole project if by some miracle we can include them in a corner or one section of this thing. Yeah, I mean, Mike, could we? Does it make more sense? Well, I mean, I know the answer. It's it's a stupid question, but does it make more sense to find a spot within the facility or to build a small satellite? designed for them well that's that's what i was just thinking do you take that building on the on the uh right near the ball field and you buy it and use that as the as the food bank building right and you use the church parking adjacent to it so it doesn't interfere with the parking that you need for the community center right because again the, i mean the, there is a connection with the clergy association and uh, the food bank, so there's the potential that we could have some of the local clergy assisting in, uh, you know, if we had to acquire land or something like that. Um, I think that's something that we could reach out to them to at least. Is that state property? Is that state property across the street? That little strip? A little cutout where that big truck parks all the time? Yeah. I I'm going to venture to guess yes. Is that part of Derby Avenue is a state road, right? Correct. Correct. So would the state sell it? They may. The state might agree to enter into a lease with the town to use that parcel. Yeah. Well, you're thinking of maybe flipping the food bank over there? Yeah. I'm sure for something like that, that uh, the state would probably be very generous with the with the lease to, to Fred's point. You know, maybe a you know, a dollar a year type thing if we're going to do something along the lines of a food bank or something exactly. beneficial to the community. Hey, Zach, when the, uh, the summer, uh, the farmer comes over with his stuff, is yeah. it tied together with the food bank and uh, do, do people do both? That, that is separate. The farmer's market's separate. There are a lot of people that go to the farmer's market. They do park in that back parking lot where the church is and they, they cycle in through there. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll look at, I'll look at the whole parcel all the way around. Is there any other property in town? Like, what are we doing with center annex? <laughs> I keep broaching that topic. Uh, I keep broaching that topic uh, every once in a while, usually once a month. I mean, about, the biggest uh, moving, I mean, the, I, moving the board of Ed and uh, signing the back of the the title to the building to anybody that wants it. Yeah, we have. Um, you know, this obviously is all pre-COVID. Um, you know, I had spoken with Mayor Loretti about potentially moving Naugatuck Valley Health to back to Shelton. Um, you know, all of the debt that Naugatuck Valley Health took on to redo the, their part of the building is all gone. So that is not there. So if we can come up with a way to make it, um, I guess, non-budget destroying to them, um, you know, maybe they would move. Um, you know, I don't know. I, th I think the Board of Education, uh, you know, we looked at some different plans. I know that Tim and Mike uh, kind of put some numbers together just loosely about, uh, you know, the potential of moving the Board of Education up to the high school, how that might work. So there's there's some options. But unless we can move uh, Naugatuck Valley Health. You got a lot of buildings in Ansonia. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, so I, so I don't, you know, I don't know. Um, but if we can't move dogs out Valley health, then I don't know. It makes sense to, uh, yeah. to move the board of ed, you know, generate that cost. Right. Right, right. Um, you know, could we move the board of ed to the high school, move the food bank into 98 bank street? You know, maybe we can do something like that, but I don't know how nice it would be to have a food bank on the second floor with no elevator. Well, yeah, and then you know, is no, is there anybody that's really looking to buy that building? I mean, that. that uh, thing yeah, is the well, I had some conversations with uh, the gentleman that owns 100 Bank Street, 
Okay. Um, and he, he's kind of chomping at the bit, at least he was pre-COVID, for us to, to put that out to bid. He did some work in a similar building down in Fairfield, and he thought that that model would translate very nicely with, in Seymour. Okay. So, you know, there could be a potential bar. Maybe we get enough money to pay for the move of uh, the Board of Education and a move of Naugatuck Valley Health. So it could just be a break-even thing. But if we get the building itself off the books, uh, I think that's a home run. I mean, similar to uh, Maple Street School. We saw the value in that. I mean, the home run. When we when we had our little budget summit over the two day period, we you know we used some of Tim's numbers and tossed a prelim figure of about five fifty in terms of moving board of ed up to high school to reconfigure and whatever. Now that that number may or may not be a good number, it may be higher or lower, but I I think the it's it's an eventuality that if it comes the sooner the better to just get this thing over with, and if if Valley Health. Um, can approach the town with, you know, some kind of, hey, you give us X, we'll go here or there or whatever. It's certainly worth looking into. And then we get rid of an old relic building that just costs us a lot of money to maintain. Yeah. I mean, I would be in favor of getting rid of that building before doing anything else. No, oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. It's it's expensive. So, Fred, maybe you could um, reach out to Rosalie to maybe see, because she's the chairman still, correct? He is the chairman of the health district. The chairwoman, I should say. Um, maybe just to kind of mention to see what, maybe take her temperature to see if she would even be open to that. I mean, I, I think we'd be very hard pressed to move Naugatuck Valley Health at this point, just with the pandemic going on. But if, you know, if it's a year or two down the road, I think they're going to, they might be more open to it. I don't see them taking that on at this point with everything that's going on. I agree. I'll, I'll, I'll broach the subject with you once again. Hey, hey, Fred, is your old offices still for sale? Or are they sold? That was sold. Okay. There's got to be something around. So we, but I'll take a look at the uh, community center site and see what we can fit on there. Okay. All right. Anything additional anybody wants to bring up? Anything we, we may have missed? We probably have to make plans for for your statue, but I guess that can go towards the end. Yo, yeah, that'll be the last thing. Okay. Nice black on the wall with his picture. Oh, yeah. Bust. His bust. Yeah. yeah. My, my picture's not doing any good to anybody. I can tell you that right now. Um, all right. So the date of our next meeting, just pulling that up is we are Thursday, February 4th. So Mike, does that give you enough time to kind of block diagram yeah. kind of what we talked about? Yes. Okay. So the, the course of action, if everybody's in agreement, uh, Mike will come back with those block diagrams. We can review all of those. Um, and then the outcome of that conversation will be the building of a survey that will go out. We'll put the survey out as soon as we can. We'll keep it out for the entire month of February. And then we'll have the results for the meeting in March. And then we can kind of talk off of that. Sounds like a plan. Everybody, everybody good with that? It sounds good. Okay. So with that being said... I will entertain a motion to adjourn at uh, 8.26 p.m. So moved. Motion by Bill, second by Suzanne, because she smiled at me. Uh, all in favor? <laughs> yes, I did. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstained? So carried. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.